Grace and mercy and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. We turn our attention to the Holy Gospel from John chapter 6 where Jesus calls himself the bread that gives life. Dear Christian friends, we have a junk food problem in America. Food companies have learned how to put some extra wow factor in in the flavors of foods that they package and they become almost irresistible. And people buy them by the boatload. Sadly, processed foods are actually cheaper and easier to cook than whole foods, at least if you need to cook for yourself. America is also addicted to spiritual junk food. The more flavorful it is, the better. The more lacking in true spiritual food value, the more it gets consumed. But only one food can keep us alive forever. Jesus, the bread that gives life. John tells us that the events of this chapter took place around Passover time, one year before Jesus' crucifixion. There was now only one year left in Jesus' ministry, the year often known as the year of opposition. The crowds were smaller during that third year of his ministry. The thinning of the herd began with Jesus' hardcore teaching in John chapter 6. And it culminated with Jesus saying to the twelve, You don't also want to leave, do you? And Peter's reply, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Two weeks ago, our reading was the account of the feeding of the 5,000 earlier in this chapter. After Jesus had fed the crowds, John tells us, therefore, when Jesus realized they were about to come and take him by force (coughs) to make him king, he withdrew again to a mountain by himself. Later, he caught up with the disciples who had gone on ahead of him in a boat to cross the Sea of Galilee, where they were making little headway due to the headwind facing them. It was the story where Jesus walked to them on the water and they feared that he was a ghost. When he climbed in the boat, the boat immediately reached the other shore. And it's when they landed on that other shore that last week's gospel lesson began from John 6. We heard there was a crowd searching for him that had wondered on the other side of the Sea of Galilee where this man had gone that had given them all the free food. When they found Jesus finally, they ran to him and asked, when did you get here? And Jesus answered, Truly I tell you, you are looking for me not because you saw the signs, but because you ate the loaves and were filled. Don't work for the food that perishes, but for the food that lasts for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you, because God the Father has set his seal of approval on you. Then, as you'll recall from last week's gospel, they asked him, What shall we do to do the works of God, still wanting to earn their own way into heaven. But Jesus answered, this is the work of God, to believe in the one he has sent. Right there, Jesus outlined for them all the simple way of salvation. It's not by works. It's not by doing the works that God requires. It is by placing your trust in Jesus. It really is that simple. 
Faith in Jesus who paid for your sins gives you the gift of eternal life. Of course, in next week's gospel, Jesus tells, tells us that believing in him means more than simply saying, I believe in Jesus. It means not just believing in him when it fits with my own ideas and my own agenda. It, it means believing Jesus and everything he teaches. It means trusting Jesus completely for salvation. Jesus didn't want the crowds to go away. He wanted them to stay, though, for the right reason. And so he kept giving them that reason. He kept preaching the gospel, the gift of salvation to them. He kept inviting them to put aside their false ideas and to trust in him. He needed them to stop looking for a bread king and instead to believe in him, the bread of life. Remember when Jesus said to the devil, man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God? You know, we need the same prodding as the crowds. Our own sinful flesh wants a Jesus who meets our checklist of wants instead of the real Jesus. We want a Jesus who makes our life on this earth easier. Whereas the real Jesus came to prepare us for eternal life. He wants to feed us with his word. The real Jesus reminds us that every word he speaks is food for our souls. Not just the ones that are easy to swallow. Even after witnessing the feeding of the 5,000, the crowd's spokesmen demanded a sign of Jesus. Instead, Jesus pointed to himself. He's what they needed. They needed the bread of life. And then between last week's gospel and this week's, Jesus gave a most beautiful gospel message to them all. I am the bread of life, Jesus told them. No one who comes to me will ever be hungry. And no one who believes in me will ever be thirsty again. But as I told you, you've seen me and yet you do not believe. Everyone the Father gives me will come to me. And the one who comes to me I will never cast out. For I have come down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. This is the will of him who sent me, that I should lose none of those he has given me, but should raise them up on the last day. For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him will have eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. What an incredible offer from Jesus. Eternal life as a free gift just for entrusting your soul to Jesus' care. So how did they respond to that offer? Sadly, but not surprisingly, with hostility and disdain. That's where we pick up in today's reading. At this, the Jews started grumbling about him because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. We know his mom and dad. We know where he grew up. He can't be from heaven. It's actually this, the very same reaction of so many to Jesus today also. And I'm not just talking about atheists and others who come out and say that they hate Christians or hate Christianity. I'm also talking about those who are perfectly fine with the kind of Jesus they invent themselves. A Jesus who promises health and wealth all the time. A Jesus who's a friendly provider of all the niceties in life. Or the American patriot Jesus or Jesus the peacenik. But when the real 
Jesus demands faith in him alone and says he is the only way to heaven, that he is the bread that gives life and none other, then suddenly they say, now don't get all literal on me, come on. As a matter of fact, isn't there a part of each of us that says the same sort of thing? Whenever the Bible's demands make us just a little bit uncomfortable. Now, don't get all literal on me. That's why Jesus answered as he did. Stop complaining among yourselves. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him, and I will raise him up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they will be all be taught by God. Everyone who has listened to and learned from the Father comes to me. That is a profound truth and a profound mystery. Only the elect will come to faith and be saved. No one can come to Jesus on his own. We can choose to reject him, but we can't choose to believe. No amount of cajoling or marketing or music or emotional tear-jerking altar calls, only the Father can draw us to Jesus, and he does so by sending the Holy Spirit to work through the gospel invitation. He convicts people of their sin and then soothes them with Jesus' forgiveness. There are literally thousands of books on the market about how to market and grow the church. I've got a few of them myself. Few, if any of them, say, preach Jesus Christ and his gift of forgiveness but that's what Jesus says. He tells us right here that the gospel is the only tool that works to make real disciples of Jesus Christ because it's only the gospel that can change the heart. The gospel is the only thing that can get us to give up on ourselves and trust completely in Jesus. Some people have said that Christianity is narrow and exclusive, and it is. But it is also so broad that it is offered to absolutely anyone and everyone who will simply listen to what the Father says. And anyone who actually does listen to God becomes a believer in Jesus. That's what he says today. It is written in the prophets, and they will all be taught by God. Everyone who has listened to and learned from the Father comes to me. Amazingly, Jesus did not give up on the people who didn't listen. He just kept preaching the gospel. Just think if Jesus had given up on Nicodemus who came to him by night in secret but then who later came publicly to bury Jesus. Just think if God had given up on Paul when he was still recklessly persecuting the church. Instead, Jesus preached on. Amen, amen, I tell you. The one who believes in me has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your fathers ate manna in the wilderness and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven so that anyone may eat it and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If anyone eats this bread, he will live forever. The bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. Jesus knew, and we should too, that only the gospel can melt a heart of stone and light the spark of faith. 
Only God, through the gospel, can convert a benighted soul into an enlightened soul. That's why we memorize in the catechism. I believe that I cannot, by my own thinking or choosing, believe in Jesus Christ, my Lord, or come to him. But the Holy Spirit has called me by the gospel, enlightened me with his gifts, sanctified and kept me in the true faith. What's true for others is also true for us. If we want to live eternally, if we want to participate in the life of God now and in the world to come, we need to keep on hearing and believing the bread of life. Open your heart that the Father may draw you ever closer to Jesus through the word. Without the bread of life, we die spiritually, bit by bit, Did you ever see somebody who was behind on food and started getting low blood sugar? They can't think straight. And when we stop eating the bread of life, we cannot think straight. We cannot think spiritually any longer. Jesus wants us to keep taking in the bread of life to grow in our faith. And when we hear God's word, when we listen to the Father, the Father brings us to Jesus, who brings us to eternal life. And so we pray sincerely the words of the hymn, draw us to thee, for then shall we walk in thy steps forever, and hasten on where thou art gone to be with thee, dear Savior. Draw us to thee, O grant that we may walk the road to heaven. Direct our way, lest we should stray and from thy paths be driven. Draw us to thee unceasingly. Into thy kingdom take us. Let us for e'er thy glory share. Thy saints and joint heirs make us. Amen.